China has just pulled off something that feels straight out of a sci-fi movie. If you thought Elon Musk's tech innovations were wild, wait till you see what China is building. And hey, hit that subscribe button before your jaw drops. Quiet Acceleration – How China Went From Copy to Leader For years, people said China was the world's factory great at making things, but not inventing them. But somewhere along the way, that flipped. And it didn't happen with one big announcement. It happened quietly through a thousand connected moves that turned the country into an innovation machine. Here's what most people miss. While the rest of the world debated what AI might do, China made it a national curriculum. Kids as young as six in Beijing are already learning how to code, train models, and work with AI tools before they even memorize their multiplication tables. Think about that an entire generation being raised to build the systems the rest of the world will someday use. At the same time, the government poured billions into R&D, building city-sized labs for things like high-speed battery testing, neural processing chips, and humanoid robotics. They don't just launch prototypes, they mass-produce them. That's why when you hear about a new Chinese robot or AI car, it's rarely just one model. It's thousands already rolling off the line. And the reason they can move so fast is because everything from the batteries to the sensors is made in the same ecosystem. It's like Silicon Valley, Detroit, and a factory all rolled into one. Add to that a population that's not scared of automation. 85% of Chinese people say they're comfortable riding in a self-driving car, and you've got the perfect testing ground for the future. While the rest of the world argues over ethics and regulation, China just keeps building, silently, systematically, until one day, everyone wakes up, realizing they're years ahead. But let's zoom in, because the first thing this quiet revolution changed was the car. Next up, the vehicles that drive themselves, talk back, and can even dance. Self-driving SUVs and the GUA One Brain. Imagine standing on a city sidewalk and calling your car like you'd call an Uber, except there's no driver, and the car literally talks to you. That's what's happening in China right now. The GUA1 is one of the first vehicles in the world with a real AI brain. You can tell it, come pick me up, and it'll drive itself to you from two kilometers away. Inside, it's not just about autopilot. The car has 11 HD cameras, 12 ultrasonic sensors, and five radar systems, more eyes than a military drone. Its AI runs on dual NVIDIA chips with 508 trillion operations per second. That's the kind of processing power you'd expect in a data center not under your seat. Then there's Simo, the built-in AI partner that learns how you talk, when you're stressed, what routes you prefer, even how you like the AC. It's a mix of assistant, companion, and driver all in one. And here's the twist, China's making millions of these, not luxury one-offs. This year alone, 15 million new Chinese cars will have self-driving capability baked in. That's two out of every three vehicles rolling off a factory line. Some of these cars are doing things physics teachers would call impossible. The Yangwang U8 can spin 360 degrees in place, like a tank turning on the spot. The IM Motors L6 can literally slide sideways into a parking space. And the BYD U9? It's a supercar that can jump off the ground and dance to music. Yes, actually dance thanks to its suspension system that reacts faster than a blink. But none of this works without power, and that's where China broke the last barrier. The new 1 megawatt charging system can add 400 kilometers of range in 5 minutes faster than filling up a gas tank. It means road trips, delivery fleets, and entire cities can run on electric without waiting hours to recharge. Cars that think. Cars that move like living machines. And cars that never need a human to drive them. But here's the question. If no one's driving, who's building the roads? Up next, highways built by robots for robots. Robot roads and self-driving construction. Building the future without humans. You know those time-lapse videos of highways being built by hundreds of workers and machines? Now imagine the same thing but with zero people. That's not a prototype. It's already happening in China. They've rolled out a fleet of over a hundred self-driving haul trucks, each carrying 85 tons of material working 24 sevenths, even in freezing temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius. These trucks don't stop for brakes don't get tired, and don't crash. They coordinate with GPS-guided pavers and road rollers that talk to each other in real time, aligning, leveling, and sealing asphalt to within millimeters of precision. It's wild to think about, 
but China literally just built roads designed for robots, by robots. Every inch mapped, every layer optimized for the cars and delivery drones that will use them. And the best part? The system runs on AI supervision. Cameras and sensors monitor progress, detect flaws, and make corrections automatically. No foreman, no clipboard, no coffee breaks. It's not just efficiency, it's a new kind of infrastructure logic. The country is building the physical backbone for autonomous systems, roads where traffic lights, cars, and logistics bots are all synced in one digital rhythm. It's like the entire environment is alive, adjusting to movement in real time. Now, sure, it raises questions. What happens to the human workers? What does automation on this scale mean for jobs? But in China's view, it's not replacement, it's acceleration. One robot-built road cuts construction time by half and maintenance costs by a third. Multiply that across provinces and you get a network expanding faster than any in history. So, the roads are ready, the cars are awake, and the machines are building more machines. Next up, we're heading skyward because China's delivery drones and floating trains are rewriting what fast even means. Chapter 4. Drones Delivery and the Sky Network 15-Minute Food and Airborne Logistics if you live in Shenzhen or Hangzhou, it's entirely possible your bubble tea or medicine refill already dropped from the sky. No delivery man, no traffic, just a small humming sound, a pause, and a mechanical arm placing your package neatly in a secure box outside your window. That's not a promo test, that's daily life. China's drone logistics network is no startup fantasy. In Muan, drones have already crossed the 300,000 delivery mark flying preset corridors that map every meter of the sky in 3D. JD.com's heavy lift fleet carries up to 30 kilograms per trip, linking remote villages that used to wait days for supplies. Some even call them airborne pickup trucks, not poetic exaggeration, but literal infrastructure. Here's how it works. Every drone flight follows a digitally fenced sky lane, constantly communicating with other drones through millisecond LiDAR updates. If a bird enters the route or a signal flickers, backup systems kick in, path correction, altitude shift, automatic recall. It's an air ballet run entirely by algorithms. And at ground level, vertical takeoff bays and robotic drop boxes handle pickup and delivery without anyone touching a button. In cities, it's become a race for micro speed. A 15-minute delivery window isn't a marketing slogan, it's a national standard. AI engines simulate the entire city as a digital twin, adjusting drone routes in real time as weather, traffic, and order volumes shift. That's millions of decisions per second, all made in the cloud. Out in the countryside, it's something deeper. Villages that once waited a week for replacement parts or refrigerated medicine now get them in hours. That changes healthcare, business, and even community rhythms. When waiting disappears from your daily vocabulary, your sense of distance disappears with it. So yes, drones aren't just delivering goods, they're rewriting the clock. But flight is only half the story. What happens when trains start floating and outrun airplanes? Maglev and hyperspeed transit. If you thought Japan's bullet trains were fast, wait till you see what China's maglevs are doing. The latest test train hit 620 miles per hour. That's nearly 1,000 kilometers per hour or about the speed of a private jet slicing through the sky. Let that sink in. Beijing to Shanghai, a trip that used to take five hours by high-speed rail, could soon take two and a half. No airports, no boarding gates, no turbulence. You just float. The secret is in the magnets. These trains don't touch the rails. They hover using superconducting magnetic fields so strong they can lift a car. Some prototypes even test room temperature magnets eliminating the need for cryogenic cooling, a potential game-changer for cost and maintenance. With near-zero friction and active stabilization systems keeping every motion smooth to the millimeter, it feels less like riding a train and more like gliding through gravity itself. Of course, this tech doesn't come cheap. Each kilometer of track can cost tens of millions, but the payoff is colossal. Imagine slashing short-haul flights across the country. Fewer planes, fewer delays, and a massive carbon drop. And strategically, it means something more, a new kind of domestic mobility. If every major Chinese city can be reached in under three hours, commerce, labor, and culture start mixing at hyperspeed. People say the internet shrank the world, but high-speed maglevs are physically compressing it. The country feels smaller, 
opportunities larger. Businesses no longer plan around geography, they plan around minutes. You can't help but wonder if we can travel at jet speed on the ground. How much faster can daily life itself move? Because while trains float and drones fly, entire cities are now being run by algorithms, and the real revolution is invisible. Skynet surveillance, Palm Pay, and the hands-free life. Step into Shanghai's airport, and you'll notice something missing lines. You walk in, glance at a camera, and within seconds, your face is your boarding pass, your ID, and your ticket. 12 seconds from entrance to gate. No wallet, no phone, no paper. Welcome to the algorithmic city where the boundary between convenience and control is razor thin. Let's start with Palm Pay, China's newest biometric payment system. Instead of scanning your face or card, you hover your hand over a sensor. Infrared beams read your vein pattern, a biological signature harder to fake than a fingerprint, and the payment clears instantly. With error rates under 0.01%, this isn't just futuristic, it's reliable enough to run national commerce. Then there's Skynet, the world's largest surveillance network, with over 200 million cameras tracking movement, analyzing behavior, and flagging anomalies in real time. These aren't just CCTV eyes. They're smart systems that detect everything from jaywalking to unusual crowd density to emotional distress. Add it all up, and you get a city that practically runs itself. Traffic lights that adapt to congestion before it happens. Stores that bill you automatically when you walk out. Hospitals that check your temperature the second you enter. But the question hanging in the air quite literally is how much privacy you trade for a frictionless life. Every second of efficiency is built on a river of data, and that data never sleeps. For some, it's paradise. No waiting, no forgetting, no hassle. For others, it's surveillance polished into a lifestyle. And as the cities think for themselves, the machines inside them are learning to care for us too. Next meet the robot nurses, the android teachers, and the machine farmers shaping China's social frontier. From robot nurses to android museums, the social services revolution. In a hospital in Guangzhou, a nurse rolls silently through the halls. She doesn't breathe, doesn't sleep, and never forgets a dose. She's one of hundreds of robot nurses now serving in China's growing smart hospitals, where AI systems track thousands of patients simultaneously. These robots deliver meals, monitor vitals, and even assist in surgeries guided by doctors hundreds of kilometers away. It sounds like science fiction, but the results are real surgical error rates down by 27%, throughput up by 40%. That's not just convenience, that's saved lives. The same logic is unfolding on farms. Giant Agris T-100 drones spray hundreds of acres with centimeter precision, while 108-arm cotton toppers pick and sort without rest. GPS transplanters plant rice faster than a dozen farmers combined. In a nation facing labor shortages, the fields are quietly going autonomous. And then there are the humanoids. In the factories of X-Robots, over 200 hyper-real androids have already been built replicas of scientists, artists, even historical figures. Some are stationed in museums, giving lectures as versions of people who've been gone for centuries. It's eerie, brilliant, and just a little unsettling. Robotic dogs patrol train stations. Kung Fu-capable humanoids assist in police drills. Companion bots comfort the elderly in smart apartments. Each new use case blurs the line a little more between machine and caretaker, between tool and presence. But there's a cost. When robots fill the gaps in care, in labor, in loneliness, what happens to human connection? To trust? To identity? Imagine this. A small apartment, an EV charging quietly outside, a drone buzzing past the window, and a robot nurse watching over its aging owner. It's peaceful, efficient, and strangely hollow. China's building the future at scale. The world can marvel, condemn, or prepare, but one thing's certain, we'll all have to decide whether we're shaping these systems or being shaped by them. Which of these breakthroughs excites you most or scares you the most? Drop one word below. And if you learned something new today, subscribe, because we're tracking the tech that's quietly remaking tomorrow.